he's gone. A, a proud father who left behind a young wife and three beautiful children. He's gone. Deputy Glenn Hilliard was killed in the line of duty last night in Pittsville. Me and the kids have so many firsts. His birthday was the day after the service. Our first year of him not being there. My birthday, Thanksgiving's coming, Christmas is coming. All of these firsts that he's just not gonna be there for. Deputy Hilliard was trying to arrest a suspect wanted on multiple warrants when that suspect shot him during a foot chase. He's gone because of the prosecution or lack thereof that took place in the case of Austin Davidson. Had they just done their job and had the intestinal fortitude to do what was right, our deputy will be here today. My name is Tashika Hilliard. I am the widow of Corporal Glenn Hilliard, Wicomico County Sheriff's Office Deputy, who was killed in the line of duty on June 12, 2022. Mike Lewis, I'm the Sheriff of Wicomico County, Maryland. I have been the Sheriff here uh, since November of 2006. On June the 12th, uh, 2022, just a few months ago. It was a Sunday. <clears throat> We had church. We got home and he had to be to work at three o'clock. And I kept saying, Glenn, I don't feel well. I can't explain it. I said, I feel like something is happening. Something's going to happen. I kept sitting down and standing back up. Well, by then it's about time for him to go to work, you know, say bye, give him his kiss and come back home. I received a telephone call that uh, one of our deputies had been shot and uh, I, I asked who it was and they told me uh, Deputy Hilliard. I was already lights and siren headed back to the county. I wasn't far away, but it seemed like an eternity before I was able to get to the hospital. And when I got into the hospital, I went right into uh, the room where he was and uh, I saw my deputy lying on a table. I went to the door. I was thinking in my head, I can't believe it's happening. It's here, it's real. I can't have this for my kids. My kids need their dad. That was the worst thing I've ever had to say. That daddy's not coming home. And, and I just kept saying it. I kept saying over and over again, he's gone, he's not coming home. And I remember one of my family members saying, stop, they get it. You don't have to keep saying it, they get it. And I think I was trying to tell myself, you know, so I was trying to be strong for them, but I feel like I was trying to remind, no, this is real. He's not coming back. And they, they were not okay. They, it was, he was their everything. Wow. Glenn and I met in 2005, he was like part of the family the minute he met me and my family. He was full of life, full of love, full of joy from that first moment. Glenn was an excellent father. My kids are 16, well, 22, but 16 and 12. And still, when he would get home, they would hear the car pull up, the door open, and you would hear, Father's home! and they would go running to the door as if they were four and five years old. I've said it many times about Glenn Hilliard. When he wore the uniform of the Wicomico County Sheriff's Office, he wore it proudly. He walked the walk and he talked the talk. He loved protecting the community. He loved finding criminals. He loved knowing that he took a criminal off the street. He was without a doubt a team player. He wasn't a cowboy, very down to earth that he's very professional at what he does. Quite honestly, he became one of our rock stars here. He made me feel like, yes, there's a risk, there's a danger, but I'm trained for this. I never in a bazillion years thought that it would actually happen, especially on the Eastern Shore. Well, he's a career criminal and I do mean a career criminal. In his short life, 
uh, on this earth, 21 years of age, had amassed prior to this 29 interactions with law enforcement. I don't even care to remember his name. Nothing about him can bring my husband back. He was wanted by four different jurisdictions here in the state of Maryland alone, including Baltimore City, because he had violated parole where he had been convicted of armed robbery with a handgun. He was identified. He was arrested by detectives in Baltimore City. His case was presented to the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office under the leadership and direction of State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby. Armed robbery with a semi-automatic handgun of $1,164, it's a felony. Despite all the previous interactions they had had with him in our criminal justice system, as a juvenile, even though his case was waived to the adult court and he was tried as an adult, he still received probation before judgment. So he's on probation and he commits many more additional crimes. It's clear that this guy should have been incarcerated, robbing someone with a handgun, semi-automatic. And you know what he said to the clerk, actually, when asked, why did you point the gun at me? He said, because I can. And, and that's, that's what is our criminal justice system today. It's broken. It's broken. They would like for you to believe it's broken because of disparate treatment of minorities. It has nothing to do with it. It's the violence in this country, violence in our cities. There's zero accountability today. Zero accountability it has nothing to do with racial profiling. It has to do with the left's progressive vision of their new America they want to see. Reimagining America, reimagining law enforcement, reimagining the criminal justice system. I didn't go to law school, <laughs> but I would think as a human, you would want to look at society as your family. If I'm prosecuting someone, society's my family. The community's my family. Do I want my family to get hurt? It's resulted in a huge uptick in the number of law enforcement officers, not only being assaulted, not only being brutalized, but being crippled, being disabled, being disfigured, and in this case, being killed. What happened here in the state of Maryland is not unique. It's happening across this country with progressive prosecutors. They are eviscerating law enforcement from doing their jobs. And it's happening up in New York. It's happening in New Jersey, Chicago, Houston, and Detroit. It is a false narrative. It has been a false narrative. Our anniversary was just a few weeks before he passed away. I had the card still sitting on my nightstand and <laughs> is my last anniversary card. Quite honestly, uh, my family wants me out of law enforcement, but as long as I wear a badge and I wear a gun, I'm gonna tout the successes of proactive policing, why we should all be out there stopping cars every single day and holding criminals accountable. I'm going to go down fighting. I'm not giving up on this country. I believe in what we do. I believe in what law enforcement does. If Marilyn Mosby had done her job, if her state's attorneys, her assistant state's attorneys had done their job, if she had kept her finger on the pulse in this case, Lynn here would still be alive today. But we talk about daddy all the time. Um, we talk about things daddy loved. We talk about things daddy would say if he were here. We do not let him die. We make sure that he is alive and living in our lives. I try to be strong because I know Glenn would want for me to be strong. He was proud of my strength. He always told me how proud he was of me. That's my goal. My attempt is to be strong. It doesn't always happen. I've now lost a deputy and a line of duty. A unique club that no chief or no sheriff wants to be a part of. Not one of us, but I'm here. And quite frankly, it hurts.